This video is to demonstrate the procedures for communicating with students in the event of an e-learning day. Um, obviously, the first thing you want to do is figure out what your lesson is going to be for students. This really isn't going to uh, go into any of that. That's going to be quite varied depending on the teacher, depending on where you are in the curriculum, depending on your discipline, of course. This is really just sort of the nuts and bolts of how we want to communicate with students. As you can imagine, we'll have 250 plus teachers, 3,500 students, lots of different uh, lessons. We, when we met with students in our e-learning committee, we talked to them about that. How do you want to be communicated with? Or how do you want that first communication to come from teachers? And they were very adamant that it should be email. And there should be some consistency what is in uh, those emails. So um, we came up with an agreement with a plan with those students, and I'd like to communicate that with you right now. Um, as I say, first of all, I'm going to be referring to this document throughout this video, and I will paste the link to this document in the comment section of, of this video. So obviously you want to develop a lesson for each of your classes. Just really briefly, we don't want to go more than a class period's worth of work for each class. Um, and again, the goal is to move curriculum forward if possible. If you can continue what is already going on in class, that's really ideal. We want to give students about a week to complete the assignment. There, there still may be connectivity issues, there may be power outages, we don't really know. So don't expect, um, set the expectation that the assignment has to be done the next day of class, or the next day that school is back in session. And with any lesson, as with any lesson, students are going to need to know what are the goals, what's the objective, what uh, resources do they have to complete the assignment, web-based or otherwise, how am I going to submit my work, how are you going to assess me on it, they should know that, they should know is it going to be a rubric, is it going to be a percentage items correct, is, is it just did you do it, did you not, and how long they're going to have to complete the assignment. Now what's unique to this particular situation is they're going to need to know how do I check in for attendance purposes, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. So this next part is extremely important. We want to make sure that you are signed into Chrome using your student account, your student.leiden212.org account. Not just signed into your email, actually signed into Chrome using your student account. We want to make sure everything that you create, if there are you know Google Drive permissions, that the students are able to access that. Um, and particularly the attendance form I'm going to show you in a second, needs to be in the student domain. So, just to review that, I'm going to look up here in my top right, I've got, it says Leiden Student, that's what I've called it. And you can also see in this document, it's mstorsley at student.leiden212.org. Um, that is as opposed to, if I clicked on here, and went to switch person, here would be my home, I have a personal Gmail uh, account, and I have my mstorsley at leiden212.org account, the adult account. We want to make sure that you are in the student account. Okay, So if you're not sure how that works or if you want to check, you can click on the little uh, hamburger button here and look at your settings. And uh, up here in sign in, it says disconnect your Google account. I don't want to do that. But you can see all the different accounts that you do have. I've got my student account, my adult account, my home account, Concordia account, things like that. Um, so, just make sure you are in your student account. Now, again, what is really unique about this situation is um, we have to take attendance in some way. And what we have decided is that you will create a Google form and you will include the link to that Google form in the email you send to students. Students are going to click on that form. Really simple form, first name, last name, period, but it's also going to collect their email address. So it'll have a timestamp on it so you know they've checked in. You're going to use the responses to that form to enter your attendance as usual in eSchool. Okay, so this is how we're going to do it. I've created a template for this and all you have to do to make your own copy of that template, you only need one for all of your classes, just click on this link and it's going to prompt you to make a copy of my document, my template document, but it's going to put a copy in your drive, in your student account. So go ahead and make a copy. 
right, what you're probably going to want to do is change the name to your name. It might be nice here, I think, to have your name. All right, and that's it. Basically, this is all the form is. First name, last name, but here's the important one, is the period. You're going to be able to sort on the period to put all of your period one students together, all your period two students together. All right, so let's make sure that you really did create it and really is in your student drive. That's really important, again, because when the students fill it out, it's going to collect their email addresses, and that will only work if this document exists in your student account drive. So here it is. It's my Leiden student account. And here's Storsley eLearning Attendance. All right. So that's all good. That's where we want it. Now, in order to get the responses, in order to, to well, first, um, send the, the actual form itself, this is the new version of forms. So I'm going to go up here, this little eyeball preview. Now, this is the edit screen where you can edit questions. But I'm going to go to preview, and this is what the actual form is. This is the actual link that you are going to send to your students that they can submit. As you can see, it's really simple, first name, last name, class period. Um, and so this is the link you're going to need. So you can copy that or come back and copy it. Um, next, what you're also going to want to do with the new Google Forms is your questions are here. Responses are going to end up, you can click on that little tab right there. Um, once you start to get, you know, 100 or so students, 100 plus students, um, what you're going to want to do is create this spreadsheet. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I want to create a new spreadsheet. That's fine. And that should exist in your drive as well. All of the responses are going to end up here. And we'll show you how to sort that in a second. But let me just make sure. Sure enough, that is where the responses are going to be stored in a nice, handy-dandy Google spreadsheet. Alrighty, so we have uh, our attendance sheet ready to go. The next step is let's start drafting this email to your students. So I'm going to head over to my mail. And I'm going to compose an email. And uh, the subject line should be, should say teacher name, e-learning assignment. That's so the students know uh, once they get, you know, possibly seven emails from seven different teachers, they'll be able to figure out or be able to um, really see very quickly all the emails. They'll, they'll be able to find what the expectations are from all of their seven teachers. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I've already got a draft of an email set and I'll paste it here. Now this email uh, is specific to teachers. Um, it's it's the same email that I, I sent to teachers. Um, but the structure should be be similar for you. It should have two different parts. You should have the lesson expectations and it should have the attendance. So my lesson and the expectation for the day, if you were students, uh, the video instructions we'll use for e-learning are here. I want you to click on it. My goal is for you to understand what's expected of a teacher in the event of any learning day. Please, please watch the video and answer the questions embedded in the video by January 4th so I can check your understanding. So that's one section of the email. The second section is attendance. You need to make it really clear for students where they're supposed to go to check in for attendance. And it just so happens, well, I will remove this uh, link, but it's the exact same link. as this the live form so I'm going to copy that again I'm going to paste that link there and that should be the link to the live form it's helpful to test that just to make sure I pasted the right link and it is that's the form where students can submit all right now I want to show you a really quick and handy way of uh, finding the email addresses for, for your entire class and it's going to be using teacher dashboard. 
Okay, we are almost done, I swear. So, I'm going to um, go to Teacher Dashboard. Now, I have uh, access to a ton of different classes, but, so for example, I've got a couple of digital liter literacy classes. And let's say this particular email, I want to send the same expectations to my period 2 class and to my period 3 class. I have the same assignment. We're going to use, it's the same attendance form. Um, so I'm going to send one email to that particular group of students. Well, watch this. I'm going to click on my period 2 digital literacy. And I'm going to go over to class info. So you do see all of your students' emails, but really interestingly, if you go over to class email and copy this email address right here, that address, and here's my draft, I'm actually going to put this email address in the blind copy section, and I'll explain why. So this email address right here through Teacher Dashboard is automatically going to send the same email to all of your students in that class. And then I'm going to go back to Dashboard, and I would like to look at my period 3 class, let's say, for example. So this is my period 3 class. I'm going to go into Class Info, and I'm going to copy that email address, and again, paste it into um, the blind copy area. So if you notice, East Business 170 Section 1 2016, and the other one is East Business 170 Section 2. If I hit submit or send right now, it's going to automatically send all of those students this email. You don't have to copy every single email address. I'm putting in the blind copy area because um, if a student hit, if I just put the email address here, in the regular to field, a student could hit reply all and respond to every other student in uh, both classes. You could get some interesting email exchanges going on there. So if you put it in the blind copy section, students won't see that email address. And it just goes, it, it just looks like it goes to each individual student and they can't reply all. What I want to do is take this off just to make sure I don't send the email to those students. So you'd send this email to your classes, and if you had any other preps with different expectations and a different assignment, you would send a similar email, again, with a different lesson and expectation. Uh, put that address in the blind copy field, and all your students should start working away on a virtual learning day. All right, finally, the very last thing I want to show you is I want to generate some fake data in our e-learning attendance form just to show you how to sort once you start to get a whole bunch of students responding how you can sort by period and uh, student name which will help you hopefully help you uh, take attendance more efficiently I've created a bunch of data uh, just to kind of demonstrate really quickly what that might look like um, obviously there are only 16 students here and their usernames are all going to be different but it's only picking up my username but I've got first name, last name, class period. So if you're going to go into eSchool once students are finished checking in and we set a limit they should check in by 1 p.m., a couple of ways to do it. You can click in the top left here to select the entire set of data. You go up to Data, Sort Range, so Data to Sort Range. Your data will have a header row because we want to leave that top row there. And the first thing we want to do is sort on your class period. So it's going to put all your period ones and all your period twos together. And then what I want to do is add another sort column. Once they're sorted by class period, I also want to sort them by last name. And then why not first name just for good measure. And here we are. We have all our period one students. Justin Bieber, Chuck Jones, Robert Marzano, Roger Over, John Ruiz, a couple of John Smiths, um, and then period two. So you can go into eSchool and take your attendance based on who's already checked in. These students are present, and any students who are have not checked in would be marked absent. And then period two, 
well, one period three students so far, and then period ten. So that's how you can sort your data using um, the sort range function. That should be about it for this video, and that's plenty, and that's enough. So please feel free to send any questions my way, and good luck, it should be good.